<laughs> Every time I start it, we always do that. Okay, here we go. You're a true professional. I am a true professional. That's all right. Hi, I'm Frederick Van Johnson. I'm sitting here with Mr. Trey Radcliffe. Uh, you Hello. May, you may have heard of Trey. Uh, I don't know. You may be one of his. How many million of followers do you have? 100 million now? 200 million? <laughs> <Some? laughs> no. A lot of followers online. No. So, uh, Trey, is, today you're about, to give a, you're about to lead a photo walk in which you're going to be doing some pretty interesting things, right? So yes. Uh, tell us about here, that, and then we'll dive into it. Yeah, so we're here at this uh, Google event. It's Google mm -hmm. I.O. week, and we thought we'd do a big photo walk. So mm -hmm. Thomas Hawk, uh, who's one of my best friends, and I were going to do a big photo walk here, mm -hmm. and it'll be a blast. You know, these are always free events. Um, mm -hmm. I usually do these when I travel to different cities around the world. They're always free, and it's just a good chance for people to come out and have fun and ask me questions or learn. I, I give tutorials and tips and That's all that cool. kind of stuff and it's just a fun sort of celebration of photography. So people that like that will show up probably with their tripods and ready to do some HDR bracketing you'll say okay yeah. you know this is how you do it this is how right. I do it you'll give them tips like that. This, uh, I do this all the time mm -hmm. uh, I set up probably five or six places throughout the walk yeah. it's logistically difficult because now we have uh, hundreds and hundreds of people that come out to these things uh, but they're uh, they're still tremendously fun and uh, they're a great time. Hundreds and hundreds of people. So this is yeah. going to be a spectacle then. So this this crowd of people. Yeah. And normally when you do these walks, you, you do giveaways from time to time. Yeah. But this, this time you're doing something a little bit special. What are you doing? Yes. So we are giving away uh, Google Glass mm -hmm. uh, to one lucky person. Mm -hmm. uh, so it should be a pretty, pretty fun thing. I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of people. There's people flying in from all around. Uh, That's just to get the chance uh, to get. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, that, yeah. that product, not to derail the interview too much yeah. about Google, um, but that product... Reminds me a lot of um, like when iPhone launched and that, yeah. that fever pitch that was around the iPhone yeah. and speculation about what it would be and how it's yeah. going to change the world and it's going to be horrible, it's going to be yeah. great, you know, yeah. all that stuff. You feel the same way about it? or No, I think it's definitely a game changer. This mm -hmm. idea, especially for photographers, we mm -hmm. love taking photos all the time. And yeah. if it's just so convenient that you can wink or, you know, you can just say, okay, glass, take a picture mm -hmm. or just tap, it's really, really nice because... You know, we are a little bit lazy, even if we have these nice little cameras. Mm -hmm. It still takes a little while to turn it on and then bring it up and take a photo. And But if you could just instantly do it, that's the way to go, I think. Um, this, and is my, this is my phone. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's putting up a <laughs> ring there. It's sort of an ancient typewriter sound. <laughs> that was a shutter. That was a oh, camera. it was. Let's okay. Yeah. Let's see. So let, let's, let's yeah. switch gears a little bit. So yeah. let's, let's talk about um, the reason for this interview. We want to talk about post-processing uh -huh. workflow a little bit and sort of get into your head around just how do you get in the zone when you, like, say after this photo walk, mm -hmm. you get some great shots mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, what do you do? Do these, and I know you and I talked before in a previous interview where you, you have a backlog of images that you just sort of cherry pick and cultivate and that sort of thing. Yeah. When you finally get to the images from these, these, this photo walk, what yeah. happens? Like, do you have a glass of wine, you know, some <laughs> right. legal substance, you know, what's going on there? <laughs> no, no, no substances. <laughs> I, I'm fully focused on this. Okay. Uh, uh, but I do. I have about um, 70,000 unprocessed photos, mm -hmm. and I process them out of order. And this all kind of falls under the, in the magisterium, the idea that I think that post-processing is much more important than gear. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that actually nowadays you can, you can come up with your own style and your own look through post-processing yeah. uh, rather than through the kinds of shots that you take. I mean, right. there's exceptions to that if you have a particular subject matter you like to shoot or a, a certain kind of lens you really like to shoot with and you have some sort of look in this way. But I think the post-processing is by far the most exciting thing about photography nowadays. Yeah. And so I love taking the photos. I love going out to collect the light. You know, that's sort of a, a sketch or a starting point for me. Mm -hmm. And then later in Lightroom and Photoshop and these various tools that I use, uh, I love that. Usually I'll, you know, I'll turn off all the lights and I'll play weird music. And I have candles going. So it's a very, it's a very cool, zen, serene experience, this mm -hmm. post-processing. And I love it because you know that when you start working a photo a certain way, and it just becomes more beautiful than it just feels right. This is a wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. You really know that you've got something. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I mean, so so it's it's almost like you when you're out shooting, you're capturing the clay, and then you take it back, and then you sculpt it into that final image. A lot of people think, you know, that the shots that they see of yours online, that you went out and you click it, you might tweak it a little bit, and then you post it online. 
Right. So, yeah. but from previous conversations, we found out that you, it's much more than that. You may take multiple images and merge them. Talk, talk, the, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So I post process unapologetically. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that'll try to make you feel bad for post-process. You're not a purist. You're not a real photographer. Right. Right? Right? Yeah. yeah. And I always find that attitude to be terribly condescending, really. Uh, now, a lot of these more purists, for example, they will uh, do a lot of manipulation with light and this sort of thing with flashes, SB800s or big strobes or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. They might use gels. They'll do all this stuff to manipulate the light before they take the photo. Mm -hmm. uh, now, me... I do a lot of light post-processing with the raw files or multiple exposures after I take the photo. Yeah. To me, it's an arbitrary time in which you choose to uh, add or subtract light from parts of the photo. It doesn't really matter. You were restricted so, before. Now you just have less restriction on right. that stuff. Right? And I don't think doing it before or after the click is more or less pure. So, you know, if, if any of these people out there, if anyone's giving you a hard time about post-processing your photos, just tell them to, to buzz off. <laughs> because uh, I think it's actually a, a wonderful thing to post-process your photos. Yeah. And it's, it's half the it, fun, right? I, I think so, yeah. 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 Now, when you're post-processing, take me through that just briefly. Mm. Are you doing most of your work in Lightroom? Or is that just mm. the, the digital asset management software and then you're in Photoshop? Yeah. Where, do you, where do you live? Um, well, I'll give you a brief overview here. I also have a, a free HDR tutorial on the website that mm -hmm. I, I just changed. In fact, I just redid the whole thing from, cool. from the ground up. And one cool thing about the tutorial, too, is I give you my RAW files. So you can actually download my RAW files and follow along with me to get this same cool. look. Yeah. So um, what I do, I guess you could put you know, in the wheelhouse of... HDR, okay, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. really HDR just kind of comes to inform the final look. Mm -hmm. And so I often do take multiple photos of a scene, although you can do this with just one raw file, by the way, you don't have to have multiple photos. Yeah. Uh, and these multiple photos have different shutter speeds, so there's dark ones and there's bright ones. Right. And then I use some software uh, like Photomatics, mm -hmm. and I use all these. Uh, I combine all these into a single photo to rule them all. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, sliders and that kind of stuff you can play with. And that produces uh, sort of a tone mapped image. Mm -hmm. And that's one image that comes to inform the final look. I might also go back into Lightroom and play with some of the raws. Then I might take these multiple versions and bring them all into Photoshop and layer them and mask them together to Frankenstein together my own little beautiful creation. That's cool. Something that could not have existed had you not done that, right? So this yeah. is you're not this is art, right? So you're mm. you're not you're not creating a a photographic documentation of that scene. Mm. You're creating what was in your mind's eye and what you feel like you want that scene to look like. Right? Yeah, you know, so often uh, a photo comes out flat or boring, and mm -hmm. it's not truly evocative. Uh, but sometimes. When you're post-processing a certain way, and then people experience your photo, you can kind of short-circuit straight into their mind, and it, it confuses them, it surprises them. Mm -hmm. And it's, I find these kind of photos are the ones that are most interesting to me. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, I think there's something happened to our, our human brain over the past few years, mm -hmm. and it's really thanks to the internet and multiple tabs on your browser, stuff like this. Right. We can process visual information so quickly um, I remember back in the olden days when we would get a National Geographic on our shag carpeting and we'd open it up and then, you know, we'd look, we'd look at a photo, like of Burma or whatever, and we would stare at it for like 40 seconds or a minute because you would really look at it and drink it all in. Mm -hmm. Well, nowadays, I'm lucky if I look at a photo for more than five seconds. Because it's a waterfall. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. now there's something happened to our brains where we could just look at this little Cartesian grid of light and color and we get it like i get it okay scroll to the next i get it scroll to the next mm -hmm. you just go like oh that's a crappy photo let's see the next one so you're looking at people in your circles on google plus or facebook or mm -hmm. or wherever and you're just processing photos very very quickly you just get it but i find that those photos that i look at for the longest maybe 10 seconds or 20 seconds are the ones that are kind of mysterious mm -hmm. or like might have a mistake or there's something going on that i don't quite understand. And short circuit that normalcy yeah. that you that you're you're accustomed yeah. to, right? So for some and I'm still trying to figure this out myself. Why are those interesting to me? A beautiful mm -hmm. photo that has something mysterious or a possible mistake or something I don't get, these kind of photos are particularly attractive to me. So when I post process I try to integrate a little bit of mystery into this. This is something that uh, 
one of my favorite painters, uh, Pierre Auguste Renoir, he said this about his paintings, that he always tries to put something mysterious in there, something that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, this is very interesting to people for some reason. That's cool. That's cool. So let, let, let's talk, switch gears a little bit and talk about um, you, you recently, so there new, there's some new training materials on your site. Right? Yes. Um, StuckInCustoms.com. Yes. So I don't want to lead the witness a little bit, so I want to just tell me what this is yeah. and why you, you built it. You and I yeah. talked before, yeah. so the story behind how this thing came to fruition is amazing from a photography standpoint and a business standpoint. So yeah. what is this thing? Well, we're always trying new things. Um, mm -hmm. we, we want to spread the good word as much as we can to people that also agree with me that post-processing can be a beautiful thing, a very mm -hmm. life-affirming thing, and can kind of add a nice layer to your existing Punish life. Punish right? those pixels. Yes. Punish the pixels. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They're yours to bend. The light is yours to bend. Yes. So um, we had a, uh, a workshop, um, and I might do, you know, I do very few of these per year. We might amp it up, actually, because this one was so successful. But mm -hmm. I recently moved to New Zealand mm -hmm. about nine months ago with my wife and three kids. Congratulations, Willie. Thank you. And so we ended up um, uh, doing a workshop down there. And we invited uh, 20 people down. Mm -hmm. And our cost was uh, $8,000 per person. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to pay to get themselves to New Zealand. But then after that, we took care of them for mm -hmm. about four days. We went out and shot everything. Uh, and the whole time... I had a video crew with me, this amazing mm. cinematic video crew. They did an incredible job. And so we edited the whole thing together, and now that's available on, on the website. So it's basically, it's about four or five hours. Cool. And it's two hours of following me around and seeing how I set up my camera, what lenses I choose, what my settings are, everything from sunset to sunrise to middle of the day to nighttime. That's cool. All kinds of environments. I mean, you name it. It's, it's definitely landscape-centric, but yeah. And then the other half of the video is all the magic of the post-processing. It's what I do in Lightroom and Photoshop yeah, and Photomatix. Cool. We start out very slow for beginners. Like I don't, I assume that you know nothing about mm -hmm. these tools. Mm -hmm. So I go super slow and I move the sliders and show you just the important parts. Yeah. And then we get into intermediate and advanced stuff for people that really want to crank it. That's cool. So they can, so people can jump in. Like say I decided, hey, I want to dive into HDR. I can. It's basically I can. If I didn't have the time or the money to spend the eight grand and go to visit you in New Zealand, I can just I can tag along from my yep. computer. Yes. Uh, how much does the thing cost? It's ninety nine dollars. Okay. Yes. Cool. Cool. And that gives yeah. you everything. It's not a membership or anything. It's just like no, no. Yeah, it gives something. you it gives you the whole it gives you the whole shoot and match. Very cool. Yeah. Cool. You want to get a little discount to your your crew? Yes. All right. <laughs> You know me very yeah, well, because I'm, yeah. I'm very cheap that way, and I always try to wring discounts yeah. out of my interviewees. So yeah. how much can we get a discount uh, for Twitter? Let's listeners? do, um, I don't know, well, my friend, Curtis is over here, my COO. Is uh, 20 okay? 20. 20 okay. I thought he said 200. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, let's, do, let's do 20% off. 20%. Let's do that. 20% yeah. off, and let's just set the coupon code as Stuck in Customs? No, we can't do that. Let's do, let's do Twip long? Photo. Twip Photo. Done. Can you set that up, Twip Photo? Twip okay. Photo. It's activated. Twip Photo for 20% off, and we'll link to everything from yeah, the now, this episode. Yeah, now, the specific, we have lots of things in our store. Mm -hmm. The one we're talking about specifically, it's the uh, the Landscape series, the New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, and that'll be, will that be activated by the time they see this video? It'll be activated in how many minutes, Curtis? Zero minutes. <laughs> Zero awesome. minutes. It's done it's already. Right, he yeah. was ready. See, look at that. <laughs> okay. Cool. Awesome, Trey. So before we, we end this this interview, yeah. um, I know you're about to go on a trip, right? So yes. you are you're always going on a trip. <laughs> you're always stuck in customs, right? <laughs> so you're heading to China this time. Yes. What's yeah. the purpose of the trip? And I know you were talking mm -hmm. about mirrorless. What's what's the deal there? Well, I'm just going to take photos and goof around and mm -hmm. explore. It's like me um, in Korea. I'm doing the same thing. All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's nice, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. So I have no real agenda other than just finding beautiful things to take photos of. Cool. And I actually just put up a post on Google Plus that was quite uh, controversial. And you it, like controversy. Yeah. You you revel in it. <laughs> well, no, I don't. I don't. I don't like seek controversy for the sake of. I'm not like contrarian for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. I just say what I believe. Right. Right. Uh, so I put this up on Stuck in Customs at Google Plus, and it got a lot of attention. And um, it is that for the past few years. The big Nikon DSLR has been my main system, mm -hmm. like a Nikon D800, D800 most recently. The big mega, the yeah. big 
the 35 millimeter medium format camera. <laughs> And then my secondary camera was uh, my Sony NEX7, sort mm -hmm. of my backup, my little handy cam sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to do now is I'm making them switch positions. So my mm -hmm. backup quarterback is becoming the main quarterback. Interesting. So now uh, I'm going to take this Sony NEX7 to use as my main camera. But you're still taking the Nikon along. I'm taking now the Nikon is the backup, okay, just got in it. case. Okay. And so yeah, in the, actually in the beginning of the article I said, look, you know, Sony doesn't pay me any money. Mm -hmm. I bought my NEX7 full price. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't have any kind of financial relationship with Sony. So, um, uh, you know, I want to state that right away because a lot of people come out and say this stuff, you know, yeah, it's surprising. Like, well, what's really going on behind the scenes? Well, because nothing... that's right though, yeah. because a lot of photographers do that. A lot of photographers, yeah. they'll like, hey, I like Nikon today right. because Nikon gave them a bunch of gear. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Well, and so the thing is, because people from your nice audience and people all over the world, they actually buy the other products on Stuck in Customs, we make, we make plenty of money. So mm -hmm. I don't have to run around and ask for handouts or that sort of thing. So that keeps everything quite... Quite pure. Now, having said that, I'm not I'm not opposed to having a relationship with Sony in the future. <laughs> Sony, right. if you're listening. Right. No, but anyway, I uh, uh, life's too short uh, not to use the best stuff and sure. not to say what you believe. Right. You know, and I think people that have been following me for six years on the blog, they just know that I I just use whatever I want to and I say whatever I think, yeah. regardless of any relationship. Yeah. So yeah. then, okay. So the NEX7. So you're gonna are you gonna be doing HDR and all that stuff? And will, absolutely. Will this guy perform? I mean, yeah. and I'm, le I'm leading the witness because people that li watch this yeah. show know that I just bought an Olympus OMD, yeah. and yeah. I think it's a highly capable camera yeah. and surpasses a lot of DSLRs in different yeah. ways, um, but they're different beasts. Right. So yeah. this beast is going to allow you to do the level of work that you've been accustomed to, and will yes. I see a difference? Is it, yeah. No, I don't think you'll see any difference at all, and that Micro Four Thirds system that you have is mm -hmm. very good. I know you're recording this with, mm -hmm. with one of those. Yes. They have a lot of lenses for that. Yep. Uh, it has even more lenses than this Sony E-mount system, but this has enough. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly this t 10 to 18, uh, this new one, I love it. It's a crop sensor, it's an APS-C sensor, so it's effectively 15 to 27. Yeah. That's good enough. But the, um, the Sony NEX7 is 24 megapixels, so it's plenty big. Mm -hmm. uh, the new firmware update lets you do auto bracketing all the way from minus 3 to plus 3 EV. Cool. So that's you know, more than enough. Mm -hmm. And I can do everything that I need to. In fact, one reason that I got so familiar accidentally with my NEX7 is my, my Nikon 800, D800 kept breaking. My own fault, I assure you. Uh, but I had it kept breaking yeah. as you smashed it into rocks, right? <laughs> right. Unfortunately, yeah. right. I shouldn't say it. I, I should say I kept breaking. There it. you go. Yeah. So uh, and I had problems with the lenses and this sort of thing. So I had a lot of downtime, and during my downtime, I was forced to use guy. this, and I thought, oh, this is so bad. Right. You know, it's not so bad. In fact, it's pretty dang good. It's much lighter. It, the thing is, it's 5.9 times smaller than a D800. 5.9 times. Wow. Well, it's almost, smaller in mass or in weight. Uh, in mass okay. uh, or in dimensions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then in terms of weight, it's about three times uh, lighter. But each lens is all, it could be, uh, you know, These two, to three, or four times lighter. They're yeah. all tiny. Yeah. And so it's really nice. It's now, the, the thing that, I, that I'm, and I'm new with this Micro yeah. Four Thirds smaller body world, yeah. which is exciting. I love yeah. it. You know, I'm like on YouTube, all these different yeah. lenses I can get now yeah. and all the different techniques. Um, but the thing that I'm still wrestling with, having been a Nikon shooter for 20 plus years mm. or a DSLR shooter for 20 plus years, is you're in this mindset of bigger is better. I need yeah. to get the D800 because, of yeah. course, there's more there. Yeah. You know, it does all, yeah. and I'm not a pro unless I shoot with this thing. Yeah. But these things, I'm pointing at the camera that's recording yeah. this, these things are just highly capable. How do you, did you, did you have that struggle of kind of getting your, your mind around? I can do professional level work with this thing that kind of looks like it's, you know, a point and shoot on steroids. Yeah, because uh, I've been sharing a lot of images lately off my NEX7, and uh, people can't tell the difference. Mm. Uh, I can't tell the difference. I love it. Um, no, no one knows what it came from. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a Coke Pepsi cares? type of thought. Yeah, it's uh, it's wonderful. I um, I'm not uh, caught up in any kind of. Uh, old school mentality that bigger Good. is necessarily better. Yeah. And really, that in a lot of ways, carrying around that big piece of glass and iron with that mirror that flips up and down like mm -hmm. some old Da Vinci esque device. Yeah, and the pentaprism. It's, it's silly and all that, right? in a way because, uh, you know, this does not have that mirror that flips up and down. The focus is amazing. Right. It's always a little soft sometimes, my D800. Mm -hmm. Not, I shouldn't say always, I would say often it's quite soft. Yeah. 
Uh, but with this thing, man, it's always it locking is just right locked solid. Yeah. And the other cool thing that I that I don't think that uh, your camera has is this. Um, it has this OLED, this organic uh, LED in here from Sony, mm -hmm. and it is unbelievable. In so the viewfinder. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. electronic. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not seeing what's actually there, but you're seeing like a, a digital version of what's mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that has it. Yeah. But it's so it's so sharp. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievably bright and nice and. If there's a huge dynamic range situation, like it might mess up a little bit, you're not really seeing what's there. But yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, you know what's there because you can see it with your human eyes. Right, right. And if you get a nice thick raw file, you know you're getting it. Yeah. And if you auto bracket, you know you're getting all the light that's there. Yeah. So you know, basically, so you're, using, you're using that for framing and composition. Yeah, you're using it for composition. Yeah. And then you just take your three brackets or just a nice thick raw, and you, you got all the light that's there. Love it. Love yeah. it. I'm excited. It's for me. It's a whole new world. It's like opened up a different kind of. Um, uh, kind of photographer, yeah. kind of photography to me because yeah. that camera, the OMD, goes with yeah. me now. Yeah. Whereas the yeah. D seven thousand or D three or D seven hundred, it's would, a commitment. They would stay at home yeah. or they'd stay in the car, and I'd be worried about them in the yeah. car. You know. Right. But now this thing is on my shoulder, and I don't feel like a photographer with it. Yeah. Although I, I feel like I'm like Clark Kent. Yeah. You know, I have yeah. superpowers, right. but no one knows. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. Because I have this thing, they just assume, right. you know, you play on the assumptions. They just assume that you're just yeah. a normal person yeah. that uh, that likes to take snapshots, you know. Right. But you have superpowers. So. Yeah, I know some people are concerned about, you know, what happens when I show up at a client event and mm -hmm. I've got this little camera? Well, I don't, I don't, that's not really my world. I don't really have clients. Right. I just, you know, shoot for myself and for the blog. Mm -hmm. blog the blog and the internet is my client and they seem okay with it. Yeah. Uh, but I think if you've got a strong portfolio and you sell the client in your portfolio, mm -hmm. um, you know, why you show it and say, by the way, this is the camera that I use. They're this is how care. I do my work. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you've got an awesome portfolio and you're, you're a cool, you know, awesome photographer, why not? Just, just blast in there and just rock. You've got to own it. Yeah. You know, That's don't, right. uh, don't be sheepish about it and say, yeah, but this is my little camera. Just mm -hmm. go in there and own it. That's right. Say, I take amazing photos. This is what I use. Yep. I'm this man. is my tool. Yep. Yeah. Cool. It's exciting. Yeah. Trey, thank you for taking the time. I know it's a busy day for you. You're going to ready to give away some amazing prizes and <laughs> walk around San Francisco terrorizing the place with yeah. 100, 200 plus Yeah, oh, we're going to drive security crazy. <laughs> I mean, you don't think they like one guy with a tripod? Just wait till they see you oh know, four or 500 this, tripods. Let's descend on the MoMA with Thomas Hawk. He's got yeah. some history there. <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to get revenge in all these places. <laughs> Yes. See, if the, see if the security right. guards can kick us all out of this. No, this time. is like a flash mob uh, vigil vigilante group. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, Trey, thank you. Yeah, sure. I appreciate it. Awesome. Cool. All right. Trey Radcliffe, stuckincustoms.com.